Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free Disciple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. How na day? The title of today's message is The Principalities in Power. And by His grace, it's going to be a very powerful message as always. It's a continuation of the establishment. Um, a lot of understanding is lacking in this generation simply because we have been schooled in error. Um, I wanted to wait for the radio audience because we just we're running out of the ads now. So can I go straight? Okay, Zika is here to ensure that we have smooth transition. Good morning, everybody, on our live radio. Remember, we're on facebook.com forward slash cool FM Nigeria. Today's message is a continuation of last week's message, which was the establishment. Today's message is titled, The Principalities in Power. Yesterday, or Friday into Saturday, there was an incident. There was an incident of a lady who stripped naked on live video. Uh, it was a certain gentleman called MC Galaxy that was shooting the video, that was hosting the live video. And a lady called Etinosa um, was part of the live video and she started undressing you know and before you knew it she was totally naked live on the video uh, everybody saw it you know and for those who missed it the blogs were a grim reminder the next morning of what happened the night before and we all woke up to see Etino sign all her naked glory on all the major blogs. And initially I was upset because Etino Sai is not just somebody I know, she's on the Free Nation Research Group. So when I saw that, I was like, the human being in me wanted to start gingering. We will banish her, we will do this, we will do that. Luckily for me, I never react quickly. I took my time and I tried to ask God, where are we getting this thing wrong? I have some pastors, although Pentecostal, who have become my friends. And we all know that we've been, we've been schooled and are schooling in error. So at least when we ad accept that, we are now trying to see how we're going to rectify the wrongs. So I reached out to one of them and I was like, my dear brother, I see this matter is on my table and I'm, I'm not happy about it. And he gave me the sound advice that I was hearing in my own head. So I decided to write about it. You see, a lot of us who jump and say Etino Sai went naked and oh, what she did was, was very wrong. And I'm glad she has come out by herself to apologize for it. But I want to tell you who's going to apologize for the two porn sites on the top 50 sites in Nigeria. There are two porn sites. There's a porn site that is senior to jump online and all our children are doing jump and nobody's watching porn. Both porn sites come before bbc.com in viewership. So that means people are more interested in porn than in news. Go to alexa.com, have a field day. I was there on Friday, 
And I realize that the problem is deeper than we think. And I look around. What business do we have having two porn sites on the top 50 sites in Nigeria? Especially when we have 20 churches on one street. Ordinary morality they cannot give. Is morality not the beginning? Let me tell you something. Eh? When we didn't have church in Africa, no woman would dare strip herself naked and dance in the market square. When we did not have church, our traditional laws were good enough to ensure a certain level of decency. But I can never blame her. A lot of people are jumping. Is MC Galaxy's fault? Is MC Galaxy's fault? Have you sat down to understand what it takes to be a celebrity in this country? Today you are up, tomorrow you are down. Like grass. Today you are green, tomorrow you are brown, next tomorrow you are in the fire. Look at Iyanya. He was here in the same studio with me. Careers at a certain level, not much to show for it. I'm not sure he has a house or even a land. Today he was up. I mean, yesterday he was up. Today he is down. So these entertainers do anything to keep themselves up because of a fickle and transient industry that the church cannot be removed from. Because when the church says you're going to make your millions tomorrow, somebody listening to my voice is going to become a millionaire. Your mind is wrapped around how you're going to become a millionaire and your millionaire status becomes your goal. And everything between you and the millionaire status becomes a distraction. Everything. Human life, distraction. Using your girlfriend's sanitary towel, distraction. Your mother's pant, distraction. As long as you can locate your goal, you don't care how you get there. And I would be stupid to blame a gun for killing a man when there was a man that pulled the trigger. Unless the gun sat where it was, where you kept it. And decided to turn and face you and shoot you by itself. Anybody who hangs a gun for killing a man is a fool. And I ask you today, what's the trigger? Who pulled the trigger? And I'm telling you today for free. That that nonsense you people practice called the Pentecost, not the Pent, the prosperity doctrine. The doctrine of so money and get rich. This is where it gets us to. We saw the again last story. Pastor. Wants to divorce his wife, comes out in the church and divorces. Then the next thing we find out is, pastor too had babe. Then we now find out from another source again that no pastor was actually married to the babe. Then we find out again that pastor's babe is actually had a child and is now pregnant. All this going on on the pulpit. It's no longer just the pew. It has come to the pulpit. Because we're not chasing morals. We're not chasing morals. You know what we're chasing? Prosperity. 
So if your mother is sleeping with a senator to get a contract and then sitting in front of the church, do you know what unconscious message she's sending to you, her child? You can do whatever it is you want. As long as you get the money and come and frolic, prostitute with mammon on the pulpit, you'd be fine. But is that what Christ teaches us? I'm going to start with a scripture that I didn't intend to use, but at the spirit, as the Spirit leads us, open to the book of Colossians chapter 2 as I start with a prayer. Just open it down. I didn't plan for this scripture. It was just ministered into my spirit. I, was talk, I talked to um, uh, a Pentecostal pastor who told me that he watched somebody's sermon and the person used only five scriptures. I said, hey, it's not us. <laughs> How can you use five scriptures to preach one whole sermon? I said, no, it is not us. Say me, if I write 15 scriptures down, by the time I come, I'll read 18 or 20 because some will be mentioned in... The more you move with the, with the scriptures, the more you evolve in the spirit. Just open Colossians chapter 2 down. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the fact that we've identified you as our source. And we're seeking to identify who our enemy is. Good Lord Almighty King, give us the wisdom to win this battle. In Yahushua's mighty name I pray. The battle is on. Colossians chapter 2, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. In the free nation, we don't use King James because I cannot read a book that was authorized by a man who sold my ancestors and expect to be free. Hello? A book that was authorized by somebody who carried my ancestors and sold them to the point where where my ancestors arrived in the U.S. is called Jamestown. Along the river James. And then he will now come and give me Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Now that you are free. How am I free? No, be you, they sell me. <laughs> how? No, 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 no. Let me read that Galatians 5 verse 1 from another blessing, not from you. You will sell my papa, sell my mama. You won't come tell me how me I go take day free. If you know why you sell my papa and mama. I'm asking. I taught on it one of, oh, in one of my previous messages and I'm not going to teach on it today. So let's not be distracted. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2 because the anger inside me now, if I start with King James, we will not end the matter. Let's read from 20. Colossians chapter 2 and 20. You have died with Christ and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Nobody fast, rich Pharisee. 
Your Jews are doing 100 day fast. There were some Pharisees that will fast half of one year. The Pharisees were known. They used to write prayer on their sleeve. So as they are walking and waving their hand, they are praying. Yet they were the ones that sold Christ. So you see, the righteousness of man is nothing. Because the, the, the evil in man's heart is inbuilt in it you are born evil you are not born good it is society love nurture that brings out the good in you because you might be a little child and be ready to share your food but the evil in you that can never be conquered by fasting, can never be conquered by not drinking alcohol, can never be conquered, will always show its face. Unless you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. We've been taught in error. I want to read a scripture to you. From the book of Revelations. I think I've been reading it every single week. I want this scripture to sink into your head. Revelations 22 from 14. The scriptures say, Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gate of the city and eat the fruit of the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshippers, and all those who love to live a lie. I want to quickly touch on another scripture that I didn't intend to use, but nonetheless I will. John chapter 3 chapter 15 and 3 you are already clean because of the word i have spoken to you john 13 and 10 yehoshua told him whoever has already bathed needs only to wash his feet and he'll be completely clean and you are clean Though not all of you. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. If you go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I want to read from about 21. And further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. For a husband, the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. And as the church submits to Christ, your wife should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means you love your wife just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. To make her holy and clean, washed by cleansing of God's word. I'm going to quickly touch on the husband and wife issue, but I don't want us to be distracted because that's not the message I'm trying to pick here. You see, you hear men shouting at their wives, submit, 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 submit. You hear it. Every woman here has heard it. Some of you are not married today because men say she's not submissive. Ask the man, are you ready to die for me? The scripture said, Christ died for the church. So no man that cannot die for his woman deserves her submission. Am I, am I reading the book of Buddha? No. Do you want me to read it again? 
For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. We're still going to have a marriage sermon. Many of you people are wearing ring. You are not married. Many of you went, did traditional, did court, then went to dance inside the shrine, <laughs> wearing white, calling Jesus up and down, <laughs> but you are not married. A marriage is a union between a man and a woman where two become one. Where the woman submits to the man's every desire. And the man is ready to die for that woman. If you are ready to die for your woman, you will not marry a second wife. <laughs> you will not marry. Uh -uh. How can you? So are you ready to die for two people now? I'm asking you. If you are ready to die for your woman, you will not have side chick. You are ready to die for your woman and then you have a side chick. No, be side chick, the key wife. I'm asking you. You woman, you have properties that your husband doesn't know about. You have bank account, the one that he can see the alert and the one that he never sees the alert. To push the family forward, you are sleeping with senators. Your husband is sleeping with his side chick. And then you come and when it's on Sunday, you now hold yourselves, wear white, and come and enter shrine. <laughs> then pastor will stand and be kabashing his incantations. I, it, it has become incantations and it has become shrine. Because you are not one. I'm going to give everybody in the free nation a deadline of six months starting from today. Start it today. It's not easy for you to open your account and show your wife. It's not easy for you to tell your wife all your property. But let me tell you, the moment you realize that you are living with a woman, you cannot tell everything about you. First of all, you are not married. So start processing a divorce if you know you cannot become one. Because it will hold you back spiritually. One, you will not be able to love your woman till you die for her. Two, your woman will not be able to submit. Two, your woman will not be able to submit to you. Because something is lacking. Anyway, back to the message. The scripture says, from 26 now, it's talking about the church. To make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. More scriptures. So go with me back to the book of Revelations, chapter 24, 22 and 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes. How are their robes washed? How are their robes washed? With clean? With omu? Or with morning fresh? Or is it with Ariel? Or is it with Oshedudu? Or Kongi? Or Hypo? What are they washed with? Their robes are washed. Blessed are those who wash their robes. What are their robes washed with? Brother Chris. Holiness. Holiness one. I'm looking for a word. Blood two. The truth. Amarachi. Let me take you back to the scriptures. I'll read it again. Let's, let's, let's listen to this together. To make her holy and clean. That's why Brother Christo was right. 
holy and clean. But you see, why I'm giving it to Amarachi is because holiness is received. It's not what is used to wash. What is used to wash is the truth. To make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. The word of God. And remember, to worship this God, truth and spirit, is what will give you this holiness. Are, are, you, are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? So for you to, for Christ came to wash the church with the word of God that has now departed from the church. The word of God is the truth. The real truth. Not your pastor's truth. Not your geo's truth. Not your church tradition truth. Not your church customs. But the truth of God is what will wash you and make you holy. Not by your effort. We've seen the efforts. They have girlfriends. We've seen it. They are, some have even committed by bigamy. So you can't cleanse yourself. But do us a favor. Bathe yourself in God's word. So you can enter into the gates. Because outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshippers, and all who love to live a lie. So it is very clear that if you are living a lie, you are not inside. You are not tasting out of the fruit of life and you are not clean. No matter how much you pray, no matter how dedicated you are to religion, no matter how many days you fast, if you are living a lie, you are unclean. Can you please tell somebody beside you now that living a lie makes you unclean? You pray, you fast, and then you do... Hey, Holy Communion, and, and you drink, you, you now drink black currant juice. That's a lie! It was wine that contained alcohol. Of course, we know the disadvantages of alcohol. Maybe if Etinosa was not drinking plenty, she probably would have stopped when she removed her top. She would not have removed her bra. While she was drinking, she was enjoying it and taking off all her clothes. But it's just like sugar and starch. A lot of it causes diabetes. But you cannot live without starch. You can't. You need at least a bit of oil. You need a bit of starch. And you need a bit of wine in your communion. Last, last, mix it with water if you if there's too much Pentecostalism inside your body. But don't drink black currant juice or soda and say you are doing Holy Communion. Whatever you are communing is not holy. Stop living a lie. Every month you set aside 10%. You say you are instructed by the Lord. You are unclean. God did not tell any Christian to give any pastor, show me in the scriptures. You will read Malachi 3. The people they were given in Malachi 3, do we still have a Levitical priest priesthood? <coughs> or you think Igbo and Yoruba people can become Levites? <laughs> you think they can become Levites? The temple that they were, where is the temple today? They did not come down. So, as long as you are paying that tithe, you are unclean. Every January, it's like you don't have enough sin in your life. You now wait to carry your one month salary and resurrect the dead law. 
Galatians chapter 2 verse 17 clearly says it is sinful to practice the law. First fruit is more law than anything in this life. And it was a specific law given only to the Israelites. That's why I have a message for you people today to show you that the principality... Oh, 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 I'm not going there yet. <laughs> Go with me to the book of 3 John chapter 1. And I'm reading verse 2. I'm starting from King James. Don't worry, I've told all of you to throw your King James away so you don't have it. I will read it from my own so you understand it. Don't worry. You don't need to read it. It says, Beloved, this is the Lamba of the Pentecostal Church. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. You know all these things, Abi. Now the highest Lamba in this whole life. Now I don't read, give you. And you know why? Let's read it in New Living Translation. Or better still, let me read it in Greek. So that, Abby, 3 John 1. Let's read it in Greek. At least we will jump every translation so that we will have a clearer revelation. Thankfully, even the Greek scriptures are available. Ho presbyter geo to agapeto hon ego agapo an alethria. At least in your small lack of understanding, you know that agapo. Who can understand what agapo means? Thank you. Thank you. The scripture says, The elder to Gaius, the beloved, whom I love in truth. In truth. Let's go to the New Living Translation. It says, This letter is from John the elder. I am writing to Gaius, my dear friend, whom I love in truth. Then, beloved, asking James, misleading you. It doesn't say beloved. It says, dear friend. Dear friend is more specific. It's not for a nation. It's not for a church. It's for a person. And that person is not you. It can be you. But it is not you. I'll explain why. I hope all is well with you and that you are healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Some of the traveling teachers recently returned and made me very happy by telling me about your faithfulness and that you are living according to the truth. The word of God is the truth. Gaius was living according to the truth. I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following the truth. It's right there. You are not following the truth and you are saying you are so prosperous. Your mumu is of international proportion. Anytime globally they are doing Olympics, go there and represent us for Mumu. You will bring home trophy. We could know they bring any trophy before. Go and bring Mumu trophy home because you'll be Mumu. You're so prosperous. You're so how come there are only 13 billionaires in the whole world? Where are the souls that prosper? I'm asking 13 black billionaires. I'm not talking about Nigeria. Nigeria, there's only four. Small Israel has 21. Israel is the size of Lagos. Only Israel has 21. Yet black people in the whole Africa, in the whole world, only 13 are billionaires. And, and um, beloved, I wish above all things your soul prospered. Your soul cannot prosper if you are living a lie. When I say stop reading this King James, you will not hear me. How many people Listen, I want to tell you that a good population of 
pastors know that King James is a false translation. Missing error. Go and read Acts chapter 7 verse 45. The whole world translated Joshua. King James translated Jesus in the same line. Go and read it by yourself. So it is there that they can pick things. Do you know how many? Do you know that you're so prosperous? Do you, do you, it was one of the first things that lured me into the Pentecostal church. You shall prosper. You shall prosper. It is there. This is what, what it's really saying. Is that Gaius will prosper because he's living the truth. Living according to the truth. Not a combination of the truth and the law. Not a combination of the truth and your culture. Not a combination. Somebody said to me the other day, came to my status and said, I taught it in, in another message called um, the 737 Max. I expatiated on the plane and I used it to teach a Christian message. The person said, hey, that if he is, you need to get a priest to marry you. I sat down. I said, no wonder you're outside the gate. So what's now my job when they say I'm a royal priesthood? Our priest is Christ. After Christ is you. Anybody that is telling you that, hey, 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 hey I'm Christ's manager. You want to talk to Christ? Talk to me. He's a thief. That's what they are doing. Listen, listen. You want to talk to Two Faced Dibia, you never find Two Faced Dibia phone number. Yeah. When you call now, if you're more eager. Yeah. Abi? Yeah. When you want to talk to Davido, it's Asa. Yeah. Davido will not pick your call. You talk to his manager. That's not Jesus. Who, when you want to talk to Jesus, only Jesus himself will pick. Hello. Yehoshua here. What can I do to help you, my son? Yeah, Oshua no get manager. When manager go come, tell you say I drank tea with God. <laughs> then after drinking tea with God, I have a special relationship with God. So prayers pray today will be answered by fire. Now it's a walk you won't do. Go find artist. God no be artist. He no get promotional manager. Yeah. Na sonny a day. Na them get manager. No be God. And that is what they've sold to you. You need a priest. Guess what? They, they collect license for priests for America. Mm -hmm. I get one friend. We go America. No get work. He go do course. Come out as priest. My brother and a Muslim. But because priests, they do wedding. <laughs> if they pray five times prayer a day, when they won't go join people for marriage, go wear clothes, recite with they say, I pronounce you man and wife. I can't ask him. I say, Baba, he say, Baba, Yankee hard, though. <laughs> now, any work we see, we they do. The two of us can't laugh. We're going to take a break and come right back. Uh -uh. You will go and get the license and marry people. Does that mean God is marrying them? Does that mean God is marrying them? Let me tell you, marriage is between two people and they are God. Adam, Eve, God. Let me tell you how bad it is. Eve did, was naked. See, the scriptures say they were naked but not ashamed. So if they were naked and not ashamed, it means Eve did not have wedding gown. Ah. Do you want me to read it for you? Anyway, we are on the break. Let me read it for you. guys. Uh, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. No bridesmaid. Uh -uh. Let me open it for you. Huh? They were the animals. <laughs> and the animals said they mind their business. So we said that they look, they're waiting to concern them with. 
Ah, Baba, you will get, you will get enemy. Are you serious? No, no. You see, when I go, when I there was something ay. I shouldn't say this because it's my guy. He posted. Let me go to his page. Abba, we should not leave any stone unturned. I'm not saying it because he is my enemy or is my brother, or, but if it's gospel, AY no understand gospel. Listen to this. I saw a lot of people praying. I don't want to say AY on the radio. Let me say it on my, just leave it on social media. So I saw this prayer. I want to pray it openly. Father, Lord, please let my helpers not see me and think that I'm too big to be helped. You know what the scripture describes as your helper? Your wife. So this same scripture, if you translate it well, it means you should be naked in front of your wife. Meaning you should tell her the truth. She's your helper. There's no other helper. Where is the helper? <laughs> Where did you people get all this comedy from? Your helper. Thank God I was about to read the book of Genesis. It's cuckoo there. Genesis chapter 2. Let's read it together before I go live. I'm reading from 20. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. His helper was not a billionaire. His helper was not an employer of labor. His helper was not a rich man, but his rib. Let me, let me go live with this. Je uh, Genesis chapter 2 and 20. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Who was there? Nobody. Where were the bridesmaids? Where were the groomsmen? Thank you. And the Lord made a woman from the rib. He had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. And the man said. This is now bone of my bones. And flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. For she was taken out of man. This is why a man leaves his father and his mother. And is united to his wife. And they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. So there were no bridesmaids. There were no drummers. <laughs> there were no gospel singers. Do you know, I, I found out that a good number of gospel singers smoke you go. But it's for them to come and paint that picture for you. They will come. Praise the Lord. Baba, leave it. <laughs> then the pastor will come. His girlfriend is probably waiting for him inside the hotel. He just wants to quickly finish the ceremony. And read you some things that he cannot practice. And then you too. I am now married. You go home. You live your life like this. Your wife lives her life like this. And then you raise children in that corruption. When I lived in Europe, I understood husband and wife being one. But I was not raised in Europe. So I used to laugh at them. I used to laugh at their men. Ah, but when I'm more, my uncle would sit down. My uncle had a factory. He was producing... Um, <clears throat> what was it called? Printing materials at a very large scale. Yet he'll sit down and be cutting green pea. Braka, braka, braka. Once he comes home, he sits with his wife inside the kitchen. 
be cutting green peas. Wife will be cutting onion. I was looking at her and saying, eh, mm. me in Nigeria. When my father comes home, he sits down, puts his leg on, she reads newspaper, watches news. That's the life I learned, and that's the life I wanted to live. Which was, why am I cutting pea? Pea care. But as the two become one, we were raised with polygamy. So it's hard for two people to become one. Let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with I will never come here and bash polygamy. If you practice polygamy, you will not go to hellfire. Don't let, let anybody lie to you. You will not go to any hellfire. The things that you will do that will deep, that will ensure that you are going to hellfire. Some of you have already bought your land there. You will see the poor and ignore them and go and give your money to rich men. That's your hellfire loading. It has nothing to do with your polygamy. Mm -mm. But you see, you are not married. Because God will have given Adam three wives or four wives. He gave he took one rib and made her one person, and the two became one. That is marriage. You cannot be one with two people. Solomon could not be one with 1,000 women. And it's one of the reasons why his kingdom failed. Because he had his own God, they had their own gods. And very soon they started luring him to their own gods. And our God is principled, so sometimes following our God is not sweet. But they are God. Have you tried following Mammon? Your life will be sweet. But just know where it's preparing you for. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Your life will appear sweet. Because in reality, I cannot just imagine only 13 billionaires that are black in the whole world. Where are the titans? Where are the seed sowers? Where are the God is going to double me? Double, double. Where are the press down shaking together? <laughs> where are they? Where? If in the whole world, now only 13 will not be. Then somebody said, we have more billionaires in Nigeria. I said, I agree, but Forbes does not count people that steal public money. That's why all your politicians that you people know are billionaires will never make it to the list. Because how did they become billionaires? They're supposed to tar road, they did not tar. They sold oil, they did not bring the money. That's not how people, that, is that how Bill Gates became a billionaire? Go and ask Bill Gates, I started in my garage. Me and what's that his brother's name? They, not his brother, his friend. They started together. They started Microsoft together. Allen. Paul Allen. Go and ask all of them. I started in my garage. I did this. I had an idea. Go and ask Facebook. Facebook was not local government chairman that stole the money of the local government. He became a billionaire from his university before he dropped out. Harvard. He was not a local government chairman that became governor and then became chairman of everybody. You can never be a billionaire like that and the world will recognize you. Your foolish people are surrounding you that are making you rich will recognize you. The world would not. Let me continue with this teaching. I wish I had more time. Go with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and 10. Final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor. So you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers... And authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against the evil spirits in the heavenly places. Dear Christians, stop personalizing this gospel. If you read this in King James, it is called principalities and powers. In high places. Your village auntie that is a witch does not qualify. Why did I read? Beloved, above all things, I'm... so you understand that what they've done in error is personalize the scriptures for you. He wasn't talking to you, he was talking to Gaius. Just like this particular one is not talking about your witch and wizard auntie that is disturbing you in the village. They are talking about principalities and powers that are taking dominion. You see money as your dominion. No, 
They've taken over the church. They've taken over religion. They've taken over systems. They've taken over politics. They've taken over everywhere. And just as they are here on earth, they are also in high places in the heavens. I'm going to continue with this reading. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. They are not talking about your auntie in the village once again. They are talking about the real enemy that is keeping black people poor. That is why there are only 13 of us that are billionaires globally. Your auntie did not stop that. Your auntie can only stop you if you let her. Your auntie cannot stop Bill Gates. So this word is not meant for you on a personal level. It's meant for you as a black man. It's meant for you as a Christian believer. It's meant for you as an African. It's meant for you to fight the principalities and powers that are keeping you poor. But instead of fighting them, you worship them and you pay them your money. Remember the prostitute in Ezekiel 16. I didn't mean to go there. Oh God, I have so much to teach today. I don't know how I'm going to squeeze this in the little. I might just, I'll do it as a series. Last, last. Ezekiel 16, I'm reading from verse 1. Another message came to me from the Lord. So who's speaking? Who they talk? Who give a message? Good. Let's scroll down to the end. I want to show you something. From 32. Yes, you are an adulterous wife who takes in strangers instead of her own husband. Prostitutes charge for their services, but not you. You give gifts to your lovers, bribing them to come and have sex with you. So you are the opposite of other prostitutes. You pay your lovers instead of their paying you. So the principalities and powers that are supposed to make you rich at the end of the day, end up not even paying you. You pay them. Yes, you are an adulterous wife, Ezekiel 1632, who takes in strangers instead of her own husband. Prostitutes charge for their services, but not you. You give gifts to your lovers, bribing them to come and have sex with you. So you are the opposite of other prostitutes. You pay your lovers instead of their paying you. Read the Bible. I don't call it Bible anymore. I call it the scriptures because Christ never saw a Bible in his entire life. None of the disciples ever saw a Bible. The, the, the Bibles were bound, the books, the scriptures bound together, chosen by those who decided to choose what they wanted to choose. So your pastors will come and tell you like I was saying, I'm, I, God is blessing me. Listen, I know some pastors who have been wise enough to open establishments, start businesses, and from those businesses, they are running their lives. Even if they made errors at the beginning, they have wisened up. Those that are collecting money from you to be blessed by you, telling you that they are the ones blessing you, this is their message. Read it to them. Ezekiel 16. How can you be a prostitute that pays your customers to come and sleep? How? But when you look at it, you pay for prosperity. Your race doesn't even get it. Your continent does not get it. You don't get it. You know why? Because your worship is a lie. You're outside the gate. Then those people that you are pointing to are actually the ones eating out of the fruit of life. I'll continue with my reading. Ephesians chapter 6 and 13. Therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. 
You are living a lie. You cannot wear the belt of truth. How? Every scripture I've read to you today is pointing to one thing. The truth. And the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. This is where they carry the they are shooting arrows at me. You and somebody are fighting over land, forgetting that Christ said he not, does not concern himself with your land matter. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did not know? Ah, mm -hmm. uh ah. -uh. I'm sorry, I didn't plan to use this scripture, but there's no way. The scriptures I have, I will not finish this plenty, but I cannot, I have to just read this. Luke 12, 13. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's inheritance with me. Yehoshua replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. This is the Red Bible. So you and your brother are fighting over land. They are now doing you to do. You are now saying this fiery that you are mental. When Christ clearly told you that in hand no day inside your land matter. Who. The fiery that the scriptures were talking about was what it is what is happening to the nation of Christ. The body of Christ. Christianity as a whole. The devil has infiltrated taken us captives, impoverished us, 20 churches on every street, yet we are immoral. Where's the morality? Two porn sites are top 50 in Nigeria. Only one blog, as Linda Ikeji, made it top 50. Yet two porn sites made top 50. So we don't have the morality. We don't have the wealth. Where's the wealth? Where? They say even your president is poorer. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that is a joke, by the way. But <laughs> I'm asking you. Where is the wealth? Go with me. The scriptures in Ephesians six seventeen say Oh wow, we had one thousand people watch us on social on Instagram alone today. That's a lot. Let me restart the system, sorry. Just one second. my phones are getting quite old so they are slow all right we're back all right sorry had to bring the crowd back on instagram Ephesians 6 says sorry 17 Ephesians 6 17 says Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Spirit and the truth. The Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times on every occasion. How can you pray in the Spirit if you don't have the, the truth? John chapter 4, you worship God in spirit and in truth. 
So you want to pray in the spirit when you don't have the truth. <laughs> no wonder the prostitute is paying the customer. Look at someone beside you and tell him, stop paying your customer. <laughs> In fact, stop prostitution totally. Stop it. It's not good for your spiritual health. That's why we're poor. That's why we're silly. In our behavior, silliness is our next name. Mumu Award, we could not go to Olympic and collect. Now, let me show you why this message is not for your auntie in the village. It says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all our believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right word so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan. That the good news is for Jews and the Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, still preaching the message as God's ambassador. So pray that I keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Who has seen me pray, Free Nation Prayer? What do I ask? The right words. God, give me, give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Do you think I care about what you are facing in your marriage, in your... Let's deal with the principalities and powers first. The institution of marriage has been cannibalized. When they tell a man whose wife is prostituting to stay with her and he cannot divorce her till she dies, just know that people are living outside the city. And you see, outside that city is where all the moral people are. It's where the sorcerers are. So you are looking around you Believing you are in the right place, but those people you are seeing around you are the murderers. You are not washed clean. You are not eating out of the fruit of life. You are not inside the city. And because you are living a lie, you look at, it's like a mad person. A mad person thinks you are the one that is mad. Have you ever seen it before? A mad person looks at you and thinks you are a mad person. And he is okay. That's the same thing with you outside the gate. You look around you, and guess what? All the good people, the fine people, all the nice people are outside the gate with you. Your Jews and your pastors are most likely outside that same gate with you. So you look around, you see them. And you celebrate where you are. If you look closely, you see the murderers among you. Those that because they want to collect power, they slit the throats of innocent children. Some pound them. Some drink their blood. And you look at them and you keep greet them, bros. Chairman. Sa. Different, different names for those that are outside the gates with you. I need to officially round off now. But I want to read Ephesians 3 for you from 1 to 13. A free nation preaching session is a Bible class. You will hear scripture, you will be tired. When I think of all this, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ for the benefit of you Gentiles. Paul didn't describe his life in Christ as a rich man in Christ. He was not a billionaire in Christ. He was a prisoner in Christ. Assuming, by the way, that you know God gave me this special responsibility of extending his grace to you Gentiles. I'm breaking all of your hearts here and watching us online and listening to it. You are Gentiles who? Una no follow for who God gave the law of Moses. So. You are not Jews. While God gave Moses the law, there were Philistines that did not collect the law. Abi, there were Romans that did not collect the law. So the only way you can be linked with the God of Abraham 
is through the blood of Christ. Because you are not part of the people that that law was originally sent for. You are a Gentile. As I briefly wrote earlier, God himself revealed his mysterious plan to me. As you read what I have written, you would understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. God did not reveal it to the previous generations, but now by his spirit. The spirit was released. If you read Matthew 27, as he died, the spirit was released. The veil was broken. I was having a conversation with um, a brother of mine who asked me, Daddy Freeze, do you know why the, veil, why the veil was not broken from the bottom? It was torn from the top. Because if it was torn from the bottom, they would have said a human being tore it. <laughs> I was like, whoa, you're in the spirit with me. But now his spirit has revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets. And this is God's plan, both Gentiles and Jews, who believe in the good news, share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. So there are riches inherited. But do you believe the good news? The good news is not that you are going to be rich. The good news is the truth about Christ. And since we have failed to believe, we can't lie. The statistics have shown how poor we are. How poor we are morally. How poor we are spiritually. How poor we are financially. How poor we are as a people. Despite 20 churches on every street. So I boldly, with confidence, tell you that we missed our road not now, but a long time ago. A Boeing 737 MAX was built in such a way that the engines were placed forward, making the plane lean upwards. Means the plane will pitch up. And then the plane has angle of attack sensors that noted that if the angle of attack is too high, the plane will enter a stall. So those now corrected by adjusting the elevators. So the entirety... Of the flying mechanism of this plane is entrusted on one little device that can go wrong. And I say to them, take this plane and fix it. Because it's going to crash. Like it has twice already. We need to fix Christianity so it doesn't crash. Those we have leaned on. To act as angle of attack sensors have failed us. I want to take phone calls. Can I can I take a couple of phone calls? 27109692712969 and two seven one three. Nine six nine. Today's message was titled The Principalities in Power. All right, go ahead. Oh, Hello, good morning, sir. Go ahead. How are you today? Very fine. Just go ahead with your message. We don't have much time. I just want to say hi to you. I'm always elated by your preaching every Sunday. Thank you, sir. Please keep it on. The devotion is spreading like fire. Amen. Amen. It's spreading like fire. <laughs> Thank you. Have a, have a nice day. You are very welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Who's speaking? Yeah, hello. Hello? Yeah, hello, Daddy Priest. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. We lost that other caller. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. 
praise very much. I used to attend uh, this uh, Pentecostal. It was uh, the farmer lad. Let me call your name because I don't have. Uh, I'm not shy about it anymore. Okay. I used to be a right hand man of the pastor uh, when I was a student and all that kind of Bible. But since I started listening to you, I've discovered the truth, mm-hmm. and my life has changed. I'm now from other Thank you. In fact, I attended the uh, altar, the Papa and Otta Church. I attended the Papa and the Church. I didn't find anything. So, thank God. As I started listening to you for a while, I've not been going to church and I've discovered the truth. Thank you very much. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. All right, more calls coming through. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. This is Jude from Oba. All right, Jude, go ahead. Okay, thank you for your message today. And I want to encourage you to keep. Keep on doing what you are doing. You are up against an institutionalized falsehood. The system that is like the, you know, like you have also is already then is already a child in the system. So it will be easy for people to wake up like that. So I want to encourage you for what you are doing, but like placing people's minds on the real the, the truth about our society. Thank you very much. Wow. All right. Hello. Hello, good morning. Yeah, it's, it's nice speaking to you. I've been following your message every Sunday. I love what you're doing. Thank you, sir. People like me, we found out the truth in the late 1990s. So, and a lot of people see us as uh, people that are mentally unstable. Because we've been... I, I use common sense. I don't do all these scripture things. I use common sense, you know... Like uh, the issue of the Titan, I looked at it. Why should I be the one paying God? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> putting God on a sa- putting God on a salary, <laughs> monthly income. <laughs> yeah, hello. Hello, sir. Go ahead, real quick. We don't have much time, please. Hey, lost that one. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Hello, good morning. This is Cynthia. All right, Cynthia, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was married, so that is not what I want to talk about anyway. But uh, Jesus Christ attended the wedding ceremony, and I'm sure in that wedding ceremony there will, there will be a uh, bridesmaid, bridegroom, and the rest of them. I'm not trying to go against. No, 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 no. I'm, I, I just want to explain something. So let me ask you: Was Christ the one that conducted the wedding? He was sitting in somewhere in a corner. He attended the wedding of the Jews. He was a guest. So the only thing you can qualify that with is you going to a wedding and carrying some booze. That's it. That's all he did. He didn't preside over the wedding. He didn't pray over the wedding. He didn't... He attended a wedding as a guest. Now here's my problem with following the Hebrew tradition of weddings, which is not what your churches are following, by the way. Where's the wine in your churches when they are doing weddings? You see, if you decide to make it Hebrew, Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, at the end of the day, you miss the essence. It becomes tradition. Let's go back to what God said. Genesis chapter 2. Adam, Eve, and God. Why is it so hard? It's actually cheaper for you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I can give money to a funeral. If I hear that, ah, this person died and I respect that person, I can spend money on a funeral. For me to spend 10% of that money on a wedding, it will be biting my body. Wedding that I know the two of you are not going to become one. One year later, you come and cry, hey, we want to go our separate ways. <laughs> <laughs> Your pastors are doing it. What about... <laughs> please, 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 please. More calls, more calls. I- I'm rushing through this now. Yeah, hello. Hello? Hello? Good morning, sir. Good morning. That is Chris, Brother Julius on the line. Brother Julius, how are you? Please go ahead with your message. I'm, a, I'm a, a, every day by day, the thought of what Christ is being unveiled to you. And you might think that people are not listening to what you are doing, but they are listening because as a seed, you are showing the seed of the world. And people are grabbing it. But the near future, I'm telling you that the impact of what you are doing today is going to yield a greater thing. Just mm-hmm. continue because I know that the Spirit of God is still giving you a word every day by day. Mm-hmm. Every day I sit in my house listening to what you are doing. And I know it is affecting me, it's affecting millions of people, not only in Nigeria, but outside the world. Just continue, God is with you and He will continue to unveil Himself to you. Amen. 
Amen. One final call. That's all. Yeah, hello. Please tell us your name and go ahead. We don't have much time. Hello. Yes, go ahead. I am Mr. Francis. Hello, Mr. Francis, your final caller. Go ahead. Yes, don't let me know what the last caller just said. Amen. Okay. Amen and God bless. That's as far as we can go. Thank you so much, everyone. You see, you've got to you, look. Let me tell you, eh? you want to hold on to your lies. Revelations. Chapter 22 and 15. You're living a lie. You're trying to make an excuse for Jesus that attended the wedding. Did Jesus, how many disciples were the, did the job of our priest today in weddings? Ask yourself. How many weddings? Let me tell you, 90% of people that are married are married on certificates. They are single people living together, making children. <clears throat> they are not married. That is why we have the kind of family units we have. Raising the kind of children we're raising. Christ himself used his own mouth when they asked for divorce. He said, it was not, this was not what it was intended to be. It was intended to be a man and a woman. But when your man and your woman are not two before God, you are two before your community, you have joined two families together, but the two of you are not one. So at the end of the day, it becomes a union of families and you keep the families together so... I've seen families where they advise the wife, okay, your husband is not taking care of you. And just find a boyfriend outside, but just keep the marriage together. Try, just keep the marriage. <laughs> You've not heard those kind of things. <laughs> a very good friend of mine arrested her ex-husband for battery. The husband was beating her. They now call police. Police arrested the husband. So after going up and coming down, you know the advice the police gave the woman. Hey, just be managing him. Hey, see, me, I have a boyfriend. Though. And guess what? The police was telling the husband that he would take him for deliverance in church. <laughs> but I, if you see the nonsense that we do in this part of the world, police, I'm telling you, I'm not joking, was telling the husband that they would take the ex-husband to go and do deliverance. Then when the ex-husband went left, he now sat down with the wife, hey, look, I have a boyfriend. Get a boyfriend, a small boy that will be taking care of you. You know, these are men. That's how you live. Men can... Police giving... I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. This is police advice in this country. And the police is a dickiness in church. That's the marriage people want. It is what you have. Nonsense. You want me to break your heart? You, are, you that you are listening to me, you are wearing a ring, driving with your wife in your car. You are not married. Open your phone and show her whether the marriage will not end inside that car. <laughs> Open your phone and show her. Open your bank account and show her. Tell her where you really go every night. Madam, what you are going to do in Abuja, tell your husband the real details. Those your girl's night out. What you are really going to do, tell your husband. Then we will know you are married. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> You be there driving with your wife and married. Marriage an institution, a priest with us. You are fornicating together and with everybody else. Some of you are afraid to get divorced because they say if you divorce, you go and remarry outside is adultery. The one you are doing inside the marriage is what? Indoctrine. Indoctrine. <laughs> is what? Oimbo, I like Oimbo. Oimbo, Uche, I don't love you anymore. Cynthia, I think we need to start seeing other people. <laughs> ah, oh, you know they hide their own. And you go in, they go go. Just use a ginla own. Take measure yardstick. For a ginla to come out for marriage, he had to first paint his wife the highest color of bad. And I will never blame him. It is this institution people are carrying on people's head. I challenge you, all of you that I think you are married. Give your wife your password and give her the phone for one hour. And whether lawyer will not call you. You just get a call. Hello, my name is Mr. Biodo. I'm your wife's lawyer. 
um, we need to have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> By the time your wife sees half of the things you are doing inside your marriage, that you are married, and then you go and lie on the floor in the church on Sunday and, 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 and go and pay your prostitute. <laughs> Go and embrace all time and, and call your, your, your uh, call one clown that that is that is running in circles calling Papa, my Papa. <laughs> ah. I was talking to one pastor the other day who me and him have always been fighting. He said one thing. He said that, you know, normally the two of us they suspect ourselves, so we they look ourselves like this. <laughs> ah. He said that the first thing that made me close to him is when I started telling him, ah, my wife, I want to do this, my wife, I want to do this. Ah, my. He just said, hmm. Some of this, your daddy Gio and their daddy Gio and mommy Gio ends for the pulpit. They live separate lives. Lives of falsehood. Mm. So, I thank you all for listening. Um, we do have some cases, but I'm going to... Chinedu's people, they, didn't, they are not here. Um, she called you on phone, Brother Chris. She sent me a text message. They found a house. Uh, they, I, I think it's 42000 per year. Uh, for two years, that's eighty four. For, for, yeah, for for, that's forty two thousand for the whole year. Uh, year. Wow, well, that's good. Yeah. Now, how much is it? Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Then the house is forty two thousand. The agency in that place. I know this Kabago, they go church. Oh. <laughs> Praising the Lord. <laughs> Meanwhile, now you be the principality and the power. And they will still pay tight out of robbery money. Fifty fifty. For what? One fifty. What are they agenting? What are they agreeing? The lama said they said the girl told me that the lama was worth seven thousand naira. I gave the super thirty thousand. A jail is not up to that. For a whole room, no. Sometimes this Aja where they run from. Aja na the rent cost. That's more than fifty percent. Listen, if the house rent is forty two thousand and the agency is hundred thousand, that's more like five hundred percent. It's not fifty percent is twenty four thousand. So they they force them to be collecting one year. They can't yeah. when, when the year goes, so what they now do is that yeah. to yeah. 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 Caution, caution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My friend, they do it. No, no. You see, you get what you go do for a job, they go beat you. So anyway, long and short, we have a house for Chinedu at last. And he's staying with his brother. Yeah, yeah. So we have sorted out Chinedu. Um, I think we also should close Shedrach. How far with Shedrach's uh, for to how much did we raise totally? Because we have so many new people that we've not brought in. How much did we have totally? 
1470. Okay. Uh, since you are looking for 16, Abby? 17. Yeah, for, let's close it for now. Let him continue his treatment. Yes. Uh, let, 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 them let them close it now. Uh, let him continue his treatment because we have our auntie here whose sister is um, with uh, cancer of the breast. She brought her mom the other day. Now, I want to push her over. This guy gave me a slot. Monday of um, Benaya. Benaya yeah. mm. ah, and I was supposed to talk to Francis. He has been calling me. I have not called him back. It's so bad of me. He gave us a slot. Uh, how much is the total? Well, no, yes. Like one, four. one four is the total. Okay. I would rec I would give you his number, tell him you are from me because he gave me a slot that because they put out twenty five million naira to help people. I know, I know. So uh he called me and said that if I have any but they are trying to do children. But I, I called him, I called Monday uh and I talked to him and I was like, Look, I don't have children that have issues for now, but I have a certain lady who has a sister with but they are going to do investigation no mm. do you understand and even our own one of the reasons why we don't want we are i'm gonna hand you the number today uh brother chris is going to follow up from you i want to have a feedback on what they are going to do for you by the end of next week so if they can't help we'll take it on but i but he promised me that uh he would look into <coughs> your case so if it's 1.4 i'm sure they should be able to um sort that out we have other people who need rent and uh, other things our charities are closed unfortunately um but we have some people here and i'm also sorry i have to apologize we've not tried for ourselves the way we've behaved has made our ch has made jigger said to me one day said daddy freeze your verifying verifying process of people is one over ten <laughs> so when i heard that i was like okay my gift is to teach this word it is not to follow up who is sick who is not sick many people have come collected money and gone do you understand there's nothing wrong in helping members of any church. There's, there's, there's nothing wrong in it. But the problem is we also have our own members who should come first. Brother Chris raised something. He said we also need to feed people the spirit, not just uh, money. You know, you come, we pay your rent, and that's all. So before you're even going to qualify for rent wolfie i'm seeing you i'm glad you are listening because you are part of this thing um before you qualify to receive from us you have to have gone through a basic free nation class that is going to be conducted by brother chris um brother shukbo and auntie Shil. can the three of you please come let them even see your faces <laughs> One short guy will not just come one day and say, hello, I'm Mr. Shupo <laughs> of Free Nation. <laughs> Daddy Free said I should collect 100,000. When you hear Shupo, this is what he looks like. He's tall, not short. <laughs> He's almost my height. <laughs> and Brother Chris, sorry, uh -huh. anyway, it's good they can see you from here. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, see them. And Sister Shew. So you can see the three of them. Let me dodge. It's not about me. Look at them very well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, brother Chris. So you've seen them. Okay. So thank you. Let me not keep you standing for too long. So we're going to put the modalities in place and we'll announce exactly how this is going to run. It is going to be maybe like a one month course. If you've been following us like this auntie whose sister has breast cancer has been 
a free nation member for a while so she doesn't have to go through the the basic course so we are going to start i'm going to recommend her to monday she's going to call monday up and let's pick it up let's see her sister sorted out totally i'm i'm looking at that mcdonald i have to greet you mcdonald has been my brother from day one we had one group when when i first started free nation everybody used to fight in that group we never used to get anything done but even though that group broke up mcdonald and i have remained brothers and i appreciate him i was still talking about him to lara and um Neka, who are also original friends these people are mentioning you people don't know them because they started with me first in the land church i mean the physical church is only brother chris that time he used to come here i used to look at him that ah, where is this guy coming here <laughs> but he is the ground foundation member of the physical church that has grown even in physical church now amarachi was saying to me daddy there are not enough chairs so how do we get all the people to sit down so please work with us let us be able to put structures in place to help you and if you let me tell you the wickedness in this life all those your brothers and sisters that they are rejecting visa it's not because they did not qualify for the visa yeah. it's because what you people did 20 years ago when they give you visa to visit london and you have been there since then. They give you visit visa to go and do treatment. 13 years ago, you are still living there till now. How would they give your younger brother? So one of the reasons, do you know how we used to do free nation charities before? You just come with your problem, I just give the account number, you collect one million, go. That's how we used to do it before. But we realized that people have started abusing those systems. So now, we now put, initially we put in a little bit of checks. We saw that even with the checks, people were abusing the system. We put in more checks. So right now, we're at a stage where huh, you will have to fool you will have to fool brother Chris Shukbo and Sheung and then you have to fool Wolfie. Wolfie is a, is a separate entity. He's checking everything. Then you will now have to fool Evelyn that does not hear word. <laughs> if Evelyn says no, it is no. So when Evelyn gives approval and says, this has been approved, all I have to say is, okay, finish. Because they say my own verification is 1 over 10. So let me hand it over to those that know how to verify. <laughs> so they will not insult me. Abi, Irene. So that is how we are doing it. Please work with us. Uh, there was a gentleman here who was who needs house rent. Bros, come, come. <sighs> Sorry, our bros is very it's tall, really big. very big. <laughs> um, he's having rent problems. Uh, how much is the rent? Everything is 180. I don't see why we are going to make him a challenge. Let's see how we can sort him out now, 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 now. Do you understand? Uh, he is... And when he came, he was telling me about my messages. I listened. What were the messages you said you listened to? Sons of Skibala. Sons of Skibala. Remember that message? Old message. Eh? Judas Gold. That's a good message. One day I was having a conversation. I did not know I even preached that message. One day I was having a conversation with the board and then Jiga just started quoting my own message for me. He said, no, you said this, you said this, you said this, so you cannot do this. I said, okay, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> so please, um, let us see how we can help him. Now, some people are saying, is he not working? Somebody like this, how much work can he do? Let's not even lie and give ourselves. Eh? In this Nigeria, where tall people cannot walk, it is now small people that walk. So please, 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 I don't, it, it's not too much. It's not too much for us to. Who is this one saying, must you bring him to the air, show off? Where do you, if I block this person out, it look like I'm wicked. Anyway, um, can we please 
He's, he's, what he needs is a hundred and how much? Eighty. Eighty. Bro, Brother Chris, have you been to his place? Please. Please. Somebody say we should shift you to the right that the comments are covering your face. <laughs> uh -huh. How can I donate? Which account? Um, I want you to talk to Evelyn. She's there on the chat. Talk only to Evelyn. Evelyn would hand over his accounts to you. We need pledges for 180k. Um, let's help him, please. Okay? Let's help him. He's, you can see that. So, uh, some correct people are saying account, please. Account, please. Ask Evelyn. Evelyn will give you his account. Brother Chris, please yeah. collect his account so we can hand it over to <laughs> Evelyn. Uh, at Evelyn underscore Ami. Send me a message. Evelyn is there. So just send, you can see her there. Send her a message. Okay, some people are already willing to to help him. He, this is the second time coming, Abi. Oh, Third God. time. And I just did not even say anything. I was just watching him. You know? Wow, so some people are already ready to help. So don't worry. By his grace, we should be able to sort you out, sir. But once we are done sorting you out, you have to work and get your own rent for next year. Our policy don't change now. Uh -huh. So we, we, we don't want to encourage people to become... I was talking to um, one of my friends. He said he has 43 widows, or was it 300 widows, that he pays salary every month. And the widows are over 70. Once you're over 70, he doesn't allow them to work. Which makes sense. And the, Bible, the Bible? 60 years. Uh -huh. So he said once you're above 70, it doesn't allow you to work. You can see Brother Chris is a scholar now. Even me, I did not know the, the part of how old widows have to be. So if you're a widow below um, 60, you have to work. But then, of course, we might be supporting you small. Do you understand? There will be some small support here and there for you. As a widow below, but once you are above seven, I'm not saying if you have above seven people, just carry all of them and come and bring. We will not answer you. <laughs> Please. So, uh, empowerment to make sense. What do you do for a living, sir? Nothing. But what's your training? What can you do? Real estate. Yes. Okay. As in you build or? No, we, we do joint venture, but it doesn't come. It, okay, joint venture is many people who build together. Yes. Then you sell it. They just give us a 10% of it. They will just give it. Have, but it doesn't come. Agency. Agency. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is hard, though. <laughs> okay. We can't publish account details online. Yes, we're not going to publish account details. We want to track every... Before, we used to raise millions for people. But at the end of the day, look at where we are today. I'm sure some of them still go back to those they are, uh, they are customers and go and pay them. <laughs> and go and pay them. So please, please. Huh? Uh, now, if we pay your house rent, how are you going to pay next year's own? Do you have any skill? Do you have any trade? We have to start looking for skill acquisition and all those kind of things. Yeah, we are planning to set up a food business. A food business. So before the year runs out, we can be able to sell something. Okay, that's you and your wife. Yes. Okay. So, you want to set up a food business. Okay, fantastic. So, that makes sense. So that once we have sorted you for this year, you will sort yourself out and you'll be fine. By the grace of the Almighty God. Okay? So, can I close? Thank you very much, sir. Please. So, can I close? We have some new people here. Mm. And the, the lady told me that uh, what she has now is 70,000 naira. Which lady? Yes, she sent me the details. Yes. So, the balance for the house. 
How did she have 70,000? That's what she told me. From 200,000? 200,000. She'll be house is 142. Okay, she started the other boys' school. She started the two of them school. So how much did the two of their school cost? She sent me to text. Let me just read the text. I forwarded it to Evelyn. Evelyn, did you see? To me. You are right, sir. You are right. Where is perpetual? Okay. Um... Uh, she said total is 129,000, balance is 70,000. So that 70,000 does not include agency agreement is 100,000, total is 142,000, and presently with the agency that is going to be 42,000 yearly after one year. What do you say, sir? Chai, now yesterday night, now she tell me this thing. So we need, if she has, if she has... 70,000, we need at least 100,000 for her so that those boys will have something in their account. Remember those two boys, Stephen and um, Chinedu? Chinedu used to live in a bus. And we, we are picking him up to rehabilitate him. Uh, Stephen is already being rehabilitated by Perpetual. So I need 100K for the two of them. Thank you, Brother Chris, for raising this. I need 100K for the two of them. So we can close their own. Please, anybody, 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 100K um, or two people for those two boys. They are in school. We've put them in school. We, we've gone a long way yeah. assisting them. So please, anybody there, kindly contact Evelyn. If you are more familiar with Irene, get in touch with Irene. Irene will hook you up with Evelyn. Okay? For Chinedu and um steven okay anything else anything else we need to yes brother williams what was the matter extron inv is giving 50k already fantastic please get into um uh i um Evelyn, please get in touch with Exxon. Exxon is always giving, always giving. We have to pray special prayer for him. Now, listen, the day I start, I'm doing special prayer for everyone, uh, for Exxon. And anybody complains. The way Exxon is giving, he's not giving me. Abi, is it for me? He's giving two homeless boys. He's giving to a boy with cancer. He's giving to all these people. How will I not pray for him? Is he not doing what God said we should do? Yeah. He's doing it. So, I'm going to hold special prayers for those who are always there for us when it comes to our charities. King Chido's here to has brought 50k. So, hook them up. I'm going to do it. We're going to pray on you and your family. Because you have done what was instructed to be done. We, you don't know what we went through last week after service closed. We now start down. Chinedu was here crying. You, you were not there with us. You were not there with us. What do you expect the boy to do? To go and steal? Then the next, the, the same thing, you people will come and say, the boys are thieves. Do you understand? So please. And I'm very proud. I'm, I'm looking, I'm studying people. I've seen extra, anybody in the free nation knows that when it's time for donation, I'm not saying donate to my car fund. Mm -hmm. No. I've seen pastors, when people come and give church donation, they lay special hand on, on people. Because the church wants to build bigger buildings that they will eat more money from. No, this is for your own self. It's you, help your brothers. <laughs> Somebody said they have skin problem. Get in touch with me. Uh, yay, truth will always stand. We love you, sister. So, okay. I think I can close today. Yes. Uh -huh. Brother Williams. 
the, what I said the other time. Yes. The first time we made the yes. I have my papers now. This is my marine papers. I've processed them. I'm trying to renew them. I already have paid money for that. Yes. At the same time, I'm still looking for a job. To book for what job. is your. But now, yes. I told you about the rent before. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Or they're working towards it. But now. I understand. You see, my problem is because of what we have seen in the past. But Brother Williams has been with us for a while. Though. He has been with us for a while. We, he's not somebody that just come in to collect school fees. And we they look all of them, all those people that came collected school fees and ran. Shabby school fees is not one off. Have you? It's every time they will come back. And they will hear it when they come back. You understand? Apart from that boy, Solomon. Mm, apart from that Solomon boy, who we said we'll take care of, because that boy is so, he's so, we, he, all of the people asking for 500,000, 170,000. All Solomon needed was 36,000. We gave him 50,000. If you see the way he was thanking us, like we bought him car. And it's out of that 50,000, he bought jam form for his sister. So, so please, um, yes. As I'm talking to you now, I was thinking that I can raise the money. That was why I mm, mm. it. But now, the man called me the other day on phone. He says, Give me this one in there. After this month, I've not paid the money. You need to send me um, good notice. I said, Okay, can you give me two? How much is the rent? It's just 150. Although it's a very big money, but 150. 150K. Um, let the verification team mm -hmm. go into it. Yeah. Let them look into it and let them deal with Evelyn directly. Uh, Evelyn, I don't have power. The power I have is to announce. And that announcing is after they've gone through the proper verification. For the sake of those who are contributing, we owe them that accountability. Please work with me. Okay? God bless you all. Let me close the service with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for uplifting us in every way. We thank you for your guidance, your love, your protection, and your care. Father, let your truth keep us inside your city with the fruit of life. Let your truth keep us in the spirit with you as your wisdom guides us always in Yahushua's name. Amen.